Hello? Hello, everyone. Uh, we're going to talk about how to learn the Jembe visually with v5.js. And I use we because there are two of us on the stage. Uh, my name is Amit Kapoor. I work in the space of uh, crafting visual stories with data, so the intersection of data, visuals, and stories. And uh, I have my friend here, Ashok, who is a professional theater act artist. You may have seen him on Rang Shankara. He's also a film actor, um, and his last film, Prakriti, actually won the national award. But the reason I've asked him to join me here is because he is a djembe player, and he's been playing the djembe for the last uh, 15 years. Uh, and I'm going to request him to help me in the visualization of music uh, by using djembe and the way that we learn that. Um, so just to set the context of the talk, because yesterday there was a talk by Shri Kumar on Web, Web Audio API, uh, that talk was mostly around uh, visualizing or synthesizing music. And this is kind of the other part of uh, the Web Audio API, which is kind of visualizing what the output of live music is. So that's how those two link together. Um, now, if many of you may not be familiar with Jembe, so uh, in order to, for you to get a sense of what this musical instrument is, how does it sound like, I'm going to just ask Ashok to play for about a minute or so, and, um, and then you can get a sense of how it sounds like. How do we learn the djembe now? Um, we obviously have to start somewhere. And uh, my journey with the djembe started about four years back when I went to one of the uh, uh, workshops that Ashok was conducting and tried to learn djembe. And the djembe is actually uh, a deceptively simple instrument to start with. So if you want to come to Ashok and you ask him to teach you how to play, he'll basically say, okay, let's start playing the djembe, and that's how you learn to play. And uh, the djembe basically has two basic tones, or be, uh, basic ways of striking the head. One of them is the bass, and the other one is the tone. Now, those are the two basic, uh, basic tones uh, that you can make with the djembe. And the rhythm really happens when you combine them together in, in a way that starts to sound like music. Right? So if I was to ask Ashok to play like a very simple rhythm. Now, you can start by just listening and start to play. And uh, sometimes in the workshop, you actually need to then probably verbalize it. And verbalizing a rhythm like this would just be using boom for the bass and pa for the tone would be boom pa boom pa boom pa boom pa boom pa boom pa boom boom pa and this is not very uncommon i mean in most of the traditional music uh, african or indian verbalizing is very common uh, in tabla or even in carnatic or hindustani you would be verbalizing it and those two are fine and those are very valid methods to learn but if you're like me, and I like an engineer uh, with probably much more on the left side, you need to really go to the next thing, which is, okay, tell me really, really how the notes are, right? Tell me literally how does it sound like. So what are the one, two, three, four, five, six? Did you break it down to, like that? I'm not able to understand it. I need to really 
see the notes and then start to make sense. And that is also a way, or I would then want to see it visually in a way of a notation. So can I sh see the notes? Can I, sh can you show me the notes? So this is how you would write it in a tablature, which is uh, the, the base is the one uh, with the circle below the line and the tone is the one above the line, right? That may be a simple way of representing it. So these four ways uh, are there to kind of learn the djembe and for many of us who are much more on the left side, uh, I've, we need to really get this, on the, uh, really start to know about this part of showing the notes and showing these rhythms. And I was one of the very tough students that Ashok had because he would really literally ask me to play, right? So, we all have different learning styles and, you know, anything that is worth teaching can be taught in many different ways. So, these four different styles that I just talked about uh, kind of combined together uh, are as, as four different styles of learning. And if you were to look at uh, the verbalization is kind of linguistic, uh, the playing is very interactive, very kinesthetic, and what what we are probably more used to is the symbolic math logic part of it, as well as the geometric visual spatial part of it, right? Uh, so, it is, in, it, the exercise that I took upon myself was can we make it much more visual in a way that people can then start to understand the music and start to learn. So, we're trying to use code here to really bridge the gap between music and visualization, right? So, we're trying to combine this two together and bridge the gap and what I'm going to talk about is much more creative coding, right? So my experience with coding doesn't start as a web developer. I'm not a web developer. I do a little bit of data visualization. But it's really started with processing, which is a Java-based environment written, I think, in uh, early 2000 to really visualize uh, mu music or visualize any kind of input or draw sketches in a very simple way, right? And that was ported, or at least there was a library created called processing.js by John Riesig, the founder of, or the creator of jQuery to then start to use this on the web. And if anybody's gone to Khan Academy and seen processing.js, it uses heavily processing.js to kind of teach visualization. That's the first thing, actually I taught my eight-year-old son how to do programming was using processing. So what we're gonna do today is really use p5.js, which is make coding for the modern web accessible. Um, and it's really accessible to people like me, which are beginners or people with artistic uh, inclinations or want to be more artistic than I am. And uh, so what this does is basically takes that, uh, it's a completely library written in uh, JavaScript and allows you to do much more of the sketching but also integrate much more with the DOM, audio and video and that's how we can actually use the web audio API to do it. So I'm going to start, just explain, I'm going to just explain the, the code. Uh, and this is probably like a hello world example for p5.js or hello world plus uh, plus. And that's why it's very easy to start with because once you, you have only two loops, one is a setup or two functions, one is a setup and the other one is a draw. And the setup basically creates this canvas which is this entire screen that you see on the back, uh, which is the entire window width and the height. And then you draw and you can draw it at a particular frame rate. I've reduced the frame rate to about five, fill the background, and I filled it with an alpha so that it gives an illusion of transition, which is not really happening, but it just uh, fades out generally, uh, gradually. And then I fill, choose a fill color and draw these circles on a X and Y very randomly, right? So randomly it's drawing circles, and because of the fill and repainting, it's kind of giving you an illusion of interactivity, even though it's just painting again and again with an alpha, right? So this is, this is a very simple starter example of uh, p5.js. This is probably the only code I'm going to show in this talk. Uh, and it's easy to start with. It's probably easy to start with once you know HTML, CSS, JavaScript. So somebody like me probably takes two weeks. Somebody who's new to JavaScript and attending this conference, maybe about two days. For somebody who works in all these new frameworks, probably two hours to learn, right? But it really makes it accessible to people like me to do visualizations. So. We want to connect sound to visualization. So what does really sound look like? We need to understand what sound looks like. And sound is nothing but a compression of air that comes and touches your ears, right? So if you see this person clapping, you can literally see as he claps an air compression that's going on. And this is being visualized by a very old technique called Schriller in visualization using high-speed camera and a little bit of a deflection to kind of visualize that clap in a, 
in a kind of a speed way, right? But we want to, we want to, we obviously are not going to use high speed cameras, we're going to use the browser and try and do the same thing. So we're going to use something that is p5.sound, which is just a library written, which allows us to access the web audio API using p5. So let's start with creating very simple basic mu music visualizations to kind of just show how quickly we can start to learn in a very visual way, right? So very easy to start, what is volume? What is volume of a sound? Volume is just the intensity of the sound wave, right? So if we can figure out a way to show volume, we can probably start. And so we'll start with something very simple as just showing the volume, right? So if you uh, hit the jambe now or play, you can clearly see the volume going up and down. And this is just on a log scale, uh, so it allows you to actually uh, probably even pick very sensitive no noises on the corner. So we can very quickly start to visualize just by the height of the LFs, the volume. The next step is then to figure out can we find the beat or can we feel the beat and all of us can actually feel the beat. Because feeling the beat is uh, very common. If you listen to music and you can pick up the beat very easily, right? So um, if we can pick it up very easily, how do we actually do it uh, using a visualization? In this case, now we'll just make the ellipse show again and jump, but we will create a threshold which allows us to say when a beat is being created. And a beat, and the reason we can do that is because a beat is nothing but a sudden variation or a brutal variation in sound. So the sound really goes up and then comes down. If we can catch that, we can visualize it. So if you were to just play again and uh, see a beat, so every time the the and it's also picking up my voice, I guess. The, every time it hits the threshold, it can actually very quickly start to show as a beat. Can we then take this beat forward and visualize it as a rhythm? Um, and what is rhythm? Rhythm is nothing but again a beat or a strong repeated regular pattern or repeated pattern of sound. So if we can pick up this pattern, we can start to see the uh, beat uh, or we can start to see the visualize the rhythm very quickly. So the very simple, the boom, boom, uh, boom, pa, boom, pa that we were playing, you can clearly see those red lines that are coming up are actually just when the beat is detected. And I can play around with these uh, detection on the side, which you can see what threshold level is a beat is there, when does it start to decay, and how long should the beat be held so that I don't repeatedly capture a beat. Uh, beat. I can quickly play with this and start to capture. So it could not only be a gem, it could just be my voice that is picking up. So we can go very quickly from volume to beat to a rhythm. Can we then start to create the notations? Because then if we can make it notations which are not only static but also interactive, then we can also get a much more visual clue on how to, how to learn the jamming. So what if we were to just take this very simple of picking up the volume and say that the bass ones are very, are volumes that's kind of above the threshold but not very high and the tone ones are really high. So we're still using volume as an approximation to, to pick up the beat, right? Uh, and so we'll show the bass is on the bottom, the tone is on the top and we'll try and see, still use this volume to kind of show these notations, right? So notations which are now we're using music or representing it using symbols, right? And that's what we have. So if I ask Ashok to play again, um, and you'll start to see some notation. Very quickly, as an algorithm, from 
volume, to beat, to rhythm, to notation. And so far we have done nothing but just play with volume. We just said, if I know how loud it is, how often it is changing, I just visualize it and I can use this. And now, that's a basic visualization. We can, we can take it to the next level. Because technically, the difference between a bass and a tone is not really just volume. It's actually different frequencies, right? The bass is much heavier, the tone is much lighter, right? So let's see how we could do that, right? We could uh, extend this algorithm further. And to do that, uh, we will need something called a fast Fourier transformation, which is, it is, we don't need to really go into it, but it's really taking a small snapshot of the sound, so capture the sound snapshot, and just look at all the volumes across those frequencies. And in this case, we'll do use 1024 pins, and just say how the volume is. So right now, looking at volume across those frequency or time. So let's start with time. So we'll just show volume across time. And to do this, we'll just use a bell. And this is what I think you can use an oscillator to create it, but we can actually just So this is just showing those pins now across time. But what, if you really want to pick up uh, the frequency, we need to show it across frequency, if you really want to pick up the bass and the tone. So if you were to just map the frequencies, and then you can show the bass, and you can see the bass on the left when we hit the bass, and we can use the shaker to show the ones on the right. So if you see the shaker, which is much more on the right side, and if you were to use a uh, djembe, it'll be much more to the left, because the bass is much more on this left side. So what we need to do to really get the bass is map it on a log curve. Um, and once we do in the log curve, we can see much more of the starting part, which is where the djembe really is. And now if we were to play the djembe a little bit, or just play the bass a little bit, you'll see much more of this bass. So if you notice in that small thing, the bass and tone are now starting to separate out. It's just starting to separate out, and we can now probably capture that to show what is bass and what is what is tone much better than we were doing with the volume, right? So we now will try and just show the bass and tone, and we'll just use this visualization, but just choose an artificial cutoff in the middle and see the bass and the tone. So we've improved on our algorithm and now we can just use this bass and tone to actually improve our beat detection and do much more. Um, this is a crisp talk. So what next? If you're interested to explore this further and, uh, and start to create, here is a website with all these sketches. There are about 10 of them in this presentation. You can go and access it, jambevis.amitcaps.com. You can click on it, it's live, all the 10 sketches you can actually see and play. If you want to just press T on any of the sketch, you will toggle between the microphone and the song. So there is a small djembe sample and you can actually start to see that there. Okay. Um, and I, I, we will build upon this more as both as a visual tool, but also trying to explore whether we can teach in workshops and learning both uh, the way Ashok teaches in terms of just listening to the sound and also using visual cues. So I'm going to end, uh, there is more reference material, so Jason Siegel has a, has a music with workshop with P5JS, which has lots of stuff on it, uh, which he's the creator of P5.sound, you can look at it, and Daniel Shipman has the nature of code, if anybody's seen that in processing, it's ported to P5.js, you can look at that. Right? So I, I'm going to just end uh, with a small quote by Confucius, which is, all these things that we're trying to use are still tools. Uh, visualizing notations or using verbalization is still kind of a tool to learn or teach. But at the end, you really need to play the djembe to actually start to uh, learn it, right? So at some point, you need to just kind of stop at the visualization and just 
play some music. So we'll just play one last thing or play a rhythm. And I'm going to join a show again. questions till the next speaker comes on. Uh, hello. Uh, I am. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I have a question about uh, so demo was very nice. Uh, so what I understood was essentially P5, what it does, it, it's actually helps with the visualization of the sound, right? So yes. it provides you tools to build visualization on top of, so how do you provide it the, provide the input to the, to the, uh, to the JS? Uh, is it like a raw sound signal you provide it as an input? No, this is live music flowing, uh, used, captured from this mic going in. It's a web audio API, the P5 dot sound. Is all a right. wrapper on top of Web Audio API. All right, all right. So I just initiate a sound, a mic in this case, and I'm just taking the mic live and showing you visual. So this is live visualization. Okay, okay. It's not a recorded one. Uh, if you go to the website and click T, then there is a sample playing at that time. Okay. This. Uh, so one more thing. Uh, so this was more around the rhythmic nature of the sound, uh, but there is another another thing which is the um, like. How good it uh, how good it is to extend it on on melodic instruments like guitar and keyboards, so that uh, it could we could visualize uh, chords and and tablatures. Yes, I, I'm sure you can. So it allows you to do the FFT, the frequency, and you can pick up frequencies. I have not really played with going to other instruments. The only one that I've experienced playing with, and still struggling to learn, is Jeff okay. and that's what I was trying to visualize. Okay. All right, fine. Thank you. 
Yeah. Excuse me. Uh, here. Yeah. Yeah. You're mainly concentrating on the visualizations of the audio, whatever you are getting right. Uh, means uh, there is a constraint in the visualization, especially request animation frame can take only 60 frames per second. If you see, even when you are beating upright, it is not exactly sync. I mean, there is a variation. Like, right. what's your exactly the concept on that? Because you are mainly concentrating on visualization. Right. Okay, and it is not giving the accurate thing. What, I mean, what's your further approach and... So, I, I was, this is just an experiment. I mean, the code okay. is on GitHub, you know, please come back. So, I'm just still using the P5. The okay. latency on that, if any, there is double latency here because we're also trying to pick up the mic. But I have not really experienced, actually you can, as a learning tool, just to start to vi visualize notations that you don't know of, it still works enough because once I start to see the notation, it's good enough for me. Yeah. But if you're trying to do with sync with games and all that, that's not what P5 is designed for. Okay. It's more for creative coding to try and do uh, visualization or any other purposes for uh, just people to, you know, in different contexts rather than just... Yeah, kind of right now it's like kind of no destination but still experimenting on the things where we may reach somewhere. Yeah. Uh, Thank uh, you. Also to add to that, part of the reason you saw a delay is the projector has a slight delay. So there's a 150 millisecond delay between the laptop to the projector and that was why the visualization was not in sync with audio. It's not the computer's problem. Yeah, the the significant delay came from the projector, not from the computer. Okay, let's, let's take, you can try it on offline and uh, online right now and see what the visualization is. Thank you. I think we'll have to stop now. Yeah, okay. Thank you everyone. I'm available outside for questions.